Hi everyone. Sorry for the long break. Um, you know how feminists always go on about the pay gap and how women are paid less for the same work than men? Well, keep that in mind as I go through this article. Forget maternity leave. Women should get paid menstrual leave every month and men will just have to lump it, says leading doctor. In the subtitle here, it also mentions the fact that it's already a legal in countries such as Japan and Indonesia. Well, it's not exactly what they're suggesting here. It is actually very different. So we'll see about that further on. Women who suffer from period pains and feel under the weather each month should get paid leave, a leading doctor has suggested. Get the Okay, I'm not going to try and pronounce this. I'm going to butcher it anyway. So, this doctor, professor of obstetrics, I mean, you see the problem I have with these words, and gynecology, believes menstrual leave will boost a woman's motivation and productivity when they are in the workplace. Okay, he's entitled to his opinion. He even goes as far uh, as to question if a woman uh, were to accidentally become pregnant, should her employer pay for the termination? Although concedes that society isn't likely to be ready for that. Yes, of course, because everything is just supposed to be handed over to women, isn't it? But anyway, let's go on. Explaining his reasoning, he told the mail online, some women feel really grotty when menstruating. Coming into work is a struggle and they feel lousy. Hmm, grotty. I wonder if that's a medical term. When you feel like that, it's harder to take pride in your work and perform as well. It is about employers being sensible and aware. Like maternity leave, he proposes, the menstrual leave should not interfere with career progression or structure. Of course not. It would be one to three days each month. That means 12 to 13 days every year. Think about that. Separate to sick leave entitlement. It is not sickness after all. The concept is believed to have started in Japan in the early 20th century. Writing in the journal Healthcare for Women International, Alice J. Dan of the University of Illinois explains that menstruation leave first emerged as an issue in the 1920s and 30s when employed women were mostly young and working conditions for them were difficult. The lack of adequate sanitary facilities and materials made management of menstruation especially difficult for factory and transportation workers, she said. As a result, it was bus conductors and textile workers who were among the first workers to request menstruation leave. Yeah, well, sanitary facilities and materials have improved a little bit since almost a hundred years ago, haven't they? Hmm. Since the majority of women workers were under 21 and unmarried, menstruation leave had a broader appeal than maternity leave, she adds. In Japan, legislation passed in 1947 permitted leave for any women who suffered heavily with menstruation or the work was injurious to her body during menstruation. However, and notice this, however, it was, does not specify the number of days or whether the leave is to be paid which is no little detail. There was also a belief that taking leave while menstruating prevented problems during pregnancy and childbirth, such as miscarriage and premature labor. Okay, I'm not going to comment on this. I really don't know. I'm not a doctor, so. However, the number of women taking up menstrual leave over the years declined, and Miss Dan said reasons for this include the average age of women workers increasing with older women having less need for the leave and ambitious career-minded women becoming increasingly concerned that taking it could harm their career prospects smart girls taiwan's current menstrual leave legislation guarantees female workers three days of menstrual leave a year not three days a month, three days a year, in addition to the 30 days of half-paid sick leave allotted to all workers. So it's three days a year, not 36. Indonesian women are entitled to take two days a month of menstrual leave, 
though many companies simply ignore the law and others have even been accused of forcing women to prove their need for time off. Those oppressive employers who want their employees to actually work. The concept is also being discussed in Canada and I have no doubt that it will actually go through. However, when the issue was debated last year in the Russian parliament, it caused an uproar and was thrown out. Women's rights activists in the country reacted with anger to proposals by Mikhail Degtyaryov. I'm not going to try reading that again. A member of the nationalist LDPR party who proposes the draft law to increase the protection of women at the workplace. During that period, most women experienced psychological and physiological discomfort, said Mr. Thingy, 32, who is married with two sons. The pain for the fair sex is often so intense that it is necessary to call an ambulance. Well, they not fit to work then. But human rights campaigners dismissed Mr. Thingy's idea as sexist, and quite rightly so. Now, here it says further up that women's rights activists in the country reacted with anger to the proposal of uh, period leave. Somehow it doesn't sound, sound right. But if that is so, well, kudos to these activists because they're actually campaigning for equality rather than privileges. Back to the unpronounceable doctor. Mr. Him, who was on the panel, said, hold on, panel, panel, panel. Ah, yes, I missed out a paragraph on the screenshot. Uh, the matter reared its head recently at the Festival of Ideas in Cambridge, and this doctor was on the panel of that festival. Anyway, uh, who was on the panel said, we heard from one man in the audience that women in a particular workplace in Indonesia were all absent on the same days. Was this menstrual synchrony, where women experienced their menstrual cycle at the same time? No one knows, but we do know that happens. Anyway, uh, but the wife of the employer stumbled upon these ladies shopping together in the local mall. Oh, I didn't see that coming at all. He devised a plan where women were offered a bonus payment if they work while menstruating, effectively a menstrual bonus. Right, okay. This resulted in full attendance in this workplace. I think it's brilliant. This boss is a smart cookie. I think you're a dumbass. Because if these women were well enough to go to work for a small bonus, it means they were well enough to go to work for their regular salary. Uh, he told Mail Online, the issue goes back 100 years when sanitary and hygiene facilities were different, when opportunities for women to look after themselves while menstruating were simply not there. So, okay, so the conditions have changed. They don't need it anymore. Today the issue is about enlightenment. That's what interests me. So basically an excuse uh, to give women a privilege they no longer need. Menstrual leave will make people feel more happy and comfortable in the workplace, which is a positive thing. Yeah, I'm sure the women who get three days off every month will be happy. These employers are being sensible and looking after the wishes of modern women in the workplace, he said. I'd better not come in this. And what many people forget is, women make up half the workforce. If they do feel supported, they will be a happy and productive workforce. Yes, of course, they'll be productive while they're at home not working. Maternity leave is just part of the deal. So how would menstrual leave work exactly? Would a woman have to prove she was menstruating? I don't think women should be shy about it, said the doctor. There should be no proof. Oh, what a surprise needed. Employers should take it on good faith. Yes, because women are such angels and never lie. He added, it's not a case of policing. It's about taking it on face value. Over time, records will show... Uh, okay, I'll read it in English. Over time, records will show there is a pattern of cycles and so on. So, okay. A woman takes three days off every month, establishes a cycle, of course she needs it. Oh, God. 
And here we see how the good doctor excels in feminist logic. And one of the critics who argue some women would abuse the system. I see it as an indication of how employers can be sensible to women in the workplace and keep them there, he told Mail Online completely evading the question and not answering it. I'm not suggesting the UK advocates it, but we could work out how to do it. So you are suggesting the UK advocates it. If you want to keep everyone happy in the workplace, although here we're just talking about keeping women happy, aren't we? Don't do Big Brother stuff like CCTV in the toilets. Just be fair and respect people and use your judgment. I'm not going to comment on this. It's not worth it. And what about men who will question why women should get up to 36 days of paid leave a year? Which is a very good question. Because, he said, which I'm sure he thought was a very good answer. Do you want a cup of tea when you get home in the evening? I'm not sure what question he's answering there. Are we saying that men who will question women having 36 days of paid leave a year extra want a cup of tea when they get home in the evening from the women who were on leave? Do you want your wife to be in pain? Well, is leave going to suddenly magically make her stop being in pain? I don't understand. It's not men who have to get pregnant, go through IVF and childbirth. And what's that got to do with periods? Apart from the fact that neither women have to. Women do get the option though. Men will just have to understand. And they can easily translate that. Men will just have to shut up, as usual. So, let's take down a few numbers. Let's assume a man and a woman both earn, let's say, 30k a year. There are 365 days in a year. A year is made of approximately 52 weeks. That means 52 Saturdays and 52 Sundays. That takes the number of days down to 261. Let's say 20 days of paid leave, which brings down the total to 241. Let's also consider the six bank holidays per year and bring it down to 235. And let's say they both take five sick days, uh, taking it down to 230. So, 230 days paid 30k makes it 130 pounds per day that these two people are paid. Now, Let's say the woman takes period leave and let's make it two days a month. I feel generous. That takes her day's work down to 206, which means she's being paid 145 per work day. Remember, women want to be paid the same as men for the same work. Let's not forget that this woman is working one month less than her male counterpart every year, and that is going to weigh on her employer. I must say I'm pleased to see that, as well as the usual smattering of uh, comments from women who will approve anything that benefits them, there is also a certain number of uh, women who completely disagree, as they can see how this would make them unemployable, and um, also portrayed them as fragile little flowers who can't cope with their own bodies.